Dale, it's the 40th anniversary this year of the WMPG. Tell us a little bit about the history of the station. Well, we have an interesting beginning, Brian. We mm -hmm. started as a pirate radio station out of a dorm room in Gorham at um, the university. Uh, the fellow who started this whole thing, Howard Allen, he's still around mm -hmm. in Portland. Um, it, I guess it started with a Mr. Microphone toy mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> broadcasting to the dorm there, and then it moved on to having a turntable set up with those you know, stackable, remember how turntables used to be with a big spindle mm -hmm. and when they'd go to class they'd just mm -hmm. put on a stack of records and then come back and change them in between classes, that kind of thing. Well, it was a pirate radio station. Mm -hmm. And here's uh, something that really speaks to USM and the kind of community it is. When it finally came to the attention of the administrators that there was this pirate radio station, rather than shutting them down, they said, well, if you want to make radio, let's do it right. And they got the license, and WMPG went on the air, legitimate and legal, in 1973. And what's the relationship with the university today? You're, you're on their campus, but are you part of the university? We are. We, we operate somewhat independently, um, and that's good because we're a radio station that's devoted to free speech, so nobody tells us what to say or play. But um, we really um, work with the university in that we have a lot of students around. There's an audio production course that's taught here. We have work-study students and interns. We involve students every way we can. We have um, one of our rock and roll shows in the afternoons, on Tuesday afternoons. It's called Husky Tunes, and it features a different, uh, a different USM student every week just gets to come in and try out a little radio. And talk about the range of programming that you have on the station. Well, I always say we play everything from folk to death metal and everything in between, mm -hmm. and it's true. Um, we're run by volunteers, as you know, um, and so people who have a, a passion for a certain kind of music, or we also have a lot of public affairs programming and uh, spoken word. Um, People get to follow their passions here, and they get to share the the material, the, the discussions, the music, the audio drama, the movie reviews that don't get heard on mainstream media. And um, it, so it's very varied. It's very eclectic, which makes it a little hard for me to actually market it and explain what it is because it's not a simple answer. We have um, a few hundred volunteers that help run the station with a staff of three people who actually professionally work here. And um, it's quite sometimes uh, the chaos, but it's a beautiful kind of chaos. It's a lot of creativity and energy in this place. And the goal is to have the unheard heard, have the underrepresented represented. Uh, we have uh, programming in languages other than English. We have a Cambodian show and a couple of Spanish shows. Um, we have a show that's um, partially in Russian. Uh, we have, uh, you know, other programming that's not in English to reach out to the communities in our neighborhoods. And, um, you know, really everyone is invited to come be a part of radio here, much the way it is at community television. And uh, how do you pay for all that? You're in the middle now of the shamelessly named uh, Begathon. Uh, so yes. talk about that for a bit. Yeah, well, now that you mention it. <laughs> yeah, we're here today. We've had a busy morning, as you got to see before we um, could have even a moment to sit down together. Um, yeah, this is Begathon right now. We run through the 30th of September. Um, and we go on the air and ask our listeners to help pay for this. Now, I always like to remind people that we have to have a begathon twice a year at least. Not because Dale Robin forgot to do something else, okay, but it's actually part of our design. Um, our design is to ask our listeners to support it because if the community is not engaged in many ways in making radio and in supporting the radio by doing different work around it, but also by donating money, if there's not that community commitment to community radio, then either we're doing it wrong or the community doesn't need it. And as you heard this morning, our phones were ringing off the hook. And that tells us 
undoubtedly that people are listening and hearing something that they can't hear elsewhere and they're willing to you know ante up and help us pay those bills now you know for this drive we're trying to raise fifty thousand uh, dollars to run a radio station that's not you know that much money really um, and for a area like southern maine it really is a very affordable uh, campaign and we keep it affordable because we want community radio to be accessible to this community and not to be a financial burden to it. And if people want to send you money or donate or volunteer, how do they contact you? Oh, okay. Well, during Begathon, it's 874 3000, of course, in the 207 area code. Um, if somebody wants to volunteer, we always welcome new faces and there's on air, there's off air ways to get involved. Um, and I would say, uh, oh, just go ahead and call me, 780-4151, and that's direct line to me. I'm Dale Robin Goodman, and I'm the development director, as you know. Um, uh, if they're, you know, a great way to learn more about the station, to donate, to even listen right online, is our website, wmpg.org. So it's simple and easy to remember. Maine Community Radio. <laughs> it is. It's uh, and the community means you. I mean, it means everyone, and we really mean that. Yeah, we really do.